It's a poll day here on Locked on Anaheim Ducks. I'm going to mix it up a little bit, and I'm going to go over some of the polls that were recently taken by other hosts of the Locked On Podcast Network. What am I talking about? I'll tell you on this episode of Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for over a decade. I'm currently also the public address announcer for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. All right. So about a month or so ago, actually, while I was under quarantine and, you know, sick in bed, there was a poll that came out. Actually, there was a few polls that came out about, you know, who is the best overall player, who's the best um, in certain positions. And there were a couple that really piqued my curiosity. Actually, there was a there was a few that piqued my curiosity. But there are three that I want to focus on the most today. And the first one I, I want to focus on, because this one I feel is a big one, best players 22 and under according to other locked on hosts so this one is going to anger a lot of folks this one angers me a little bit so i'm just gonna you know show you the results of that poll there it is so (sighs) top five players under 22 arg number one is of course jack hughes of the New Jersey Devils. I mean, as someone that hates Scott Stevens, you know, I don't like the Devils, but you know what? I don't disagree with that. Jack Hughes has come up aces. He has been one of the best up-and-coming players in the league, and I think part of why he gets so much love is A, East Coast bias, and B, the Devils are good now. The Devils no longer suck. They're actually a pretty decent team now. And Jack Hughes is at the forefront of a lot of that. So that one, you know, I don't disagree with that. I just don't like it. Number two on this list. So I actually have the voting in the ranks here. Number one is pretty clear cut. Um, Numbers, the, the next ones are all close. So it's a close two through five, really a close two through seven. Number two, Tim Stutzel of the Ottawa Senators. And I think this has to do with the fact that, I say this jokingly, Locked On Sends has two hosts, not one. So fine, Tim Stutzel. Number two. Yeah, I'm actually kind of okay with that. Stutzel had a terrific season with the Sens last year. Uh, Number three, this is the one that got to me big time. Number three is Connor Bedard, and he hasn't even played a game yet in the NHL. Let me repeat that for y'all. Number three is a player that has not played in the NHL yet. So this is kind of me talking to all the other locked on hosts. Um, Y'all, WTF, what gives? I kind of want to hear your like your reasoning on why you ranked Connor Bedard so high. Look, I voted on this. I didn't vote for Connor Bedard on this at all. And the reason being is because he hasn't played a game yet. He's got these stupid lofty expectations, and I get that they're high expectations, but that is putting so much pressure on the kid to be the savior of the team. And I don't know if he can do that first year out. That's just my opinion. But, you know, to put... To put Bedard at number three already, that just feels a little strange to me. Then number four, Matty Beniers. So I will full disclosure this. When I did the ratings, I put Beniers, then Zegras, then Hughes. I almost put Trevor Zegras number one, but I cannot deny the fantastic season that Matty Beniers just had. You know, he was he just won the Calder Trophy. He was the rookie of the year. 
He took the Kraken to the second round. He pushed Dallas to the limit. They they went seven games. I mean, it's not just Matty Beniers, but he was a big, big part of that roster and a massive reason why the Seattle Kraken are going to be a pretty solid team for years to come. And Matty Beniers is at the forefront of that. So Matty B at number four, I can't fault that one there. Number five, Trevor Zegras should be higher. It's criminal that he is number five on this list. Trevor Zegras is one of the most dynamic players out there. And I can't believe he was all the way done at number five, but this is a completely biased remark by me. Could be higher, but it is what it is. Other players on this list that were a little further down. I'll just go full disclosure. After that was Matt Boldy, Mo Sider of the Red Wings, Dylan Cousins of Buffalo, Jake Sanderson, and Lucas Raymond of the Wings. Uh, Boldy was pretty solid. I had him up there. Mo Sider, he was in my top five. And for him to be number seven, that one just feels really strange to me. After after Boldy and Sider, it's a huge, huge drop-off. After, like, two through seven is close. After that, there's a massive drop-off. Cousins, Sanderson, Lucas Raymond, I can't believe is that far down. Owen Power is that far down. Then Cole Caulfield, Anton Lundell, Seth Jarvis. Then you have Mason McTavish. Then you have a few more players. Towards the bottom, this one I cannot fault. Uh, Jamie Drysdale. And I think the reason people forgot about Jamie Drysdale is because he was injured almost all of last season so people kind of forgot about JD that I understand why he's so far down on the list right down there with Capo Caco and Kirby Doc and Alexi Lafreniere but oof, like I get it at least McTavish has a little bit of respect on his name so you know at, at least the fellow locked on hosts you know they like Z but I get that there are some hosts that are like, oh, he's a little bit too showboaty. So to all the other hosts, you know, let me know what gives. What gives? I have a couple of other polls that were voted on by the fellow Locked On hosts that I want to talk about. But we'll get to those on the other side. And now I want to talk to you guys about FanDuel. Get ready for the NF. Well, the NFL season's already on, but get ready for the NBA and NHL seasons as well with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get five dollars and two hundred back in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet five dollars will get one hundred bucks off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props to futures and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel is the official online sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And please, folks, gamble responsibly. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez as we're going over some polls today. And these are polls that went out to the other Locked On hosts. And, you know, we all voted on them as such. And there were some interesting results across the board. And one of the more interesting ones that I found, I'm only going over the ones that involve the Ducks. And... You know, I don't want to go over teams that aren't the Ducks because this is locked on Anaheim Ducks. So obviously I'm going to go over the teams that are Ducks related. And this one was interesting to me because I thought this would score higher for the Ducks. Best mascots. So the graphic has the top five NHL mascots. And look, Wild Wing is there. Number one, this one was obvious, Gritty. Gritty is the best mascot. He's the most known mascot. Everybody knows Gritty. A lot of people love Gritty. Uh, Gritty was by far the most popular mascot among the hosts, and it wasn't close. So Gritty, number one. 
that one makes sense. Look, Gritty came into the league like gangbusters. I remember that he came in like a wrecking ball and just took the league by storm. Not only that, but Gritty has managed to have just an insane following. So much so that Gritty has bodyguards. <laughs> so that one, not surprising. Number two, massively surprised me. The New Jersey Devil. There's definitely some bias there. But New Jersey Devil at number two, that one that one seems really strange to me because amongst fans, New Jersey Devil is a love him or hate him kind of mascot. So I was shocked to see that one at number two. I was also surprised to see Bernie at number three. Bernie's a fantastic mascot. Um, a lot of a lot of people love Bernie. But number three, ooh, that's higher than I thought. Number four was the most surprising. Howler of the Coyotes. I think if the Howler mascot was a little bit more, you know, had more tenacity, looked a little meaner, that would make more sense to me. But Howler at number four, okay, kind of strange. But coming in at number five, at least top five, Wild Wing from the Anaheim Ducks. This one was no surprise to me. I had Wild Wing higher. When I did the poll, I put Gritty at one, Wild Wing at two. And I put San Jose Sharky at number three, even though that one came in seventh on our poll. Um, look, San Jose Sharky is another popular mascot, but let's talk about Wild Wing for a second. Wild Wing, for a while, was the most infamous mascot in the National Hockey League. Down to Wild Wing's entrance into the league. Down to Wild Wing attempting to jump over the fire and failing massively. I mean, yes, part of, part of me still laughs at that, but I love Wild Wing, so part of me is like, oh no. But, you know, part of me kind of chuckled a little bit, and I know that a few Ducks fans kind of feel the same way. It, it was... You know, I, I gotta say, it was kind of a funny moment, and it made for an infamous moment, and made for, you know, made for good television, if if that's worth something, I guess. <laughs> so, Wild Wing now is much more beloved. Um, a lot of people love the mascot, they love the logo look, and I kind of get that some people said... Oh, uh, the 30th anniversary jersey is this Wild Wing. Well, it kind of is, but it's based on the shoulder patch from the old Mighty Ducks, not Wild Wing. But the shoulder patch was after Wild Wing. But little known fact, out of all the mascots in the NHL, only one of them, well, for now, had a full-blown cartoon series. Remember the Mighty Ducks TV cartoon series? Mm. Ah. Yeah, it, it was kind of quirky but it was still fun to watch i think it was on disney plus for a short bit and i watched a couple episodes and it was a it was a good time i thoroughly enjoyed it so that's who came in at number five to round out the rest of that list tommy hawk at number six wow that's high sharky at seven then iceberg buoy at nine i had buoy at five um stinger that one's surprising yuppie i had yuppie as a four so my five were Gritty, Wild Wing, Sharky, and then Yuppie and Bowie. And the reason I voted for Bowie may be a bit of bias there for the Firebirds. But, you know, and maybe bias because Bowie tugged on my playoff beard at the time. But Bowie is kind of a liked mascot in the league, so that one's all right. Yuppie I thought would rate higher. Yuppie is the only mascot on this list to have been a mascot in both the National Hockey League and Major League Baseball. Yuppie used to be the mascot for the Montreal Expos until 2004 when Les Expos moved to Washington and became the Nationals. So Les Canadiens, they adopted Yuppie, and now he's their much-beloved mascot for the Canadians, for the Habs. And you can't go wrong with Yuppie. And looking at the bottom of that list, kind of interesting to see the bottom of that list. You know, Bailey is, like, right behind, like, right there. Chance, Al the Octopus, 
somehow. Bailey's right there. Blades is right there. But you get to the bottom, the bottom five. Slapshot from the Capitals, that weird eagle. Nordy for the Wild. Yeah, it looked kind of weird. Stormy the Ice Hog for the Hurricanes. How dare you? Hunter for the Oilers. That one makes a lot of sense. And Carlton the Bear for the Maple Leafs. That one also makes a lot of sense. Carlton the Bear just looks like a plain white bear. It has that same old goofy smile. That one's always looked weird to me. Hunter for the Oilers. What the heck is that? I think I had that one towards the bottom of my list as well. But the bottom two make perfect sense. Maybe it's time that one of those teams change their mascots because they're not exactly the most popular mascots, but they're still there. They still serve a purpose. Okay, fine. It is what it is. So that's a look at the mascots list. All right, coming up after the break, I've got one more list to talk about. And this is something that I'm going to delve big time into. We'll get to that on the other side. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez as we're kind of going through some of the polls from the Locked On people. Yeah, fellow Locked On hosts, you know, they had their say on a few things. Uh, just want to kind of briefly go over some of the other polls. Um, top five NHL wingers, uh, the or the top three wingers, David Pasternak, Matt Kachuk, Jason Robertson, makes perfect sense. Top goalies, Vasilevsky, Igor Shosturkin, Connor Hellebuck, also makes sense. Top defensemen, Kel McCarr, Eric Carlson, Adam Fox. Yeah, that's about right. Top centers, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and Nathan McKinnon. Yeah, I'm good with that. Now, there's one more that I've not mentioned yet, and that is... Logos, yes. All the Locked On hosts voted on the best logos in the National Hockey League. I think you might see where I'm going with this. Number one on that list was the Detroit Red Wings. The Red Wings, obviously number one, and this was kind of not close. It really wasn't. Detroit has a, a classic logo. It's honestly timeless. That is the one logo that I don't think has really changed dramatically in their team's history. They may have changed the look of the wing itself. They changed the way the wheel looks, but it's been very minuscule changes, you know, after a few years. But the core of the logo has remained the same since heck was a pup. So it's been that long. Number two. The current Arizona Coyotes logo. Yeah, the Coyotes, the Kachina. You know what? That's a nice logo. That's a really gorgeous logo. The Kachina is still, to me, one of the more iconic logos of the 90s. They should never have strayed from that. The funny thing is we did this poll during the pandemic. And Arizona was close to the bottom. They were so freaking close to the bottom but there was a couple of teams that were worse than the Coyotes I bet you can guess which two they are yeah they're towards the bottom of this list too number three the Toronto Maple Leafs that's fair Toronto another classic logo that's it has changed over the years but the core of that logo has remained the same it says Toronto Maple Leafs it's blue and white pretty much the same Number four, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Another solid logo. Bring back the RoboPen full-time. I'm, I'm partially kidding. Love RoboPen, but I like their primary logo as well. Then number five, the Seattle Kraken. That is right. The Kraken coming at number five. New logo. It's a fresh logo. And honestly, it's a nice-looking logo. I like it a lot. Right behind them, Vegas and Calgary. So I think you see where I'm going with this. I didn't mention the Ducks. That's because they are towards the bottom. I mean, Dallas is worse. The Islanders are worse, apparently. I think the Islanders logo is better than the Ducks personally, but that's me. The Washington Capitals. Okay, it's a wordmark logo. I get it. And at the bottom, 
yet again the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are widely known to have one of the least exciting jersey sets in all of hockey, except for their third jersey with the cannon on it. If they would make that their primary logo, I bet that would go way higher on the list. Anaheim, still in the bottom. Now, the last time we did this, Anaheim was, I think, bottom three, along with Arizona and Columbus. Funny how a logo change completely changes everything. Hmm. I've mentioned this several times in the past, and it, it kind of validates my feeling that fellow Locked On hosts, you know, will agree with me on that, that the Anaheim Ducks are one of the worst logos in the National Hockey League. And we've seen numerous polls. We've seen polls on The Athletic. We've seen polls on NHL. No, we've seen a slew of polls. And almost consistently, the Anaheim Ducks are towards the bottom of that list as far as jerseys, as far as the current primary logo. There are still some people that love the web foot. I like the old school logo. And I think that's why the Ducks one is so low. Because you have a perfectly good logo right there and they're just not using it. They're not. So that's the end of that poll. You know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you agree with the Ducks being a bottom five logo? Do you agree with some of the other polls that we had on here? Let me know in the comments down below, or you can let me know on Twitter or on email. That's going to do it for this podcast. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, at free on Amazon, also on YouTube. You could email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. You could follow me on the site formerly known as Twitter, at StimpyJD. And the show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. And once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is very greatly appreciated. For Locked on Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. Please remember to please, you know, be safe out there. Be kind to one another and ducks fly together.